फाउंड आप करोगे तो assalam alaikum uh, i am dr aisha ali chaudhary and uh, today we are going to continue the previous presentation on abortions uh, we had already discussed the um, uh, abortions uh, what is the definition and uh, also the incomplete uh, we were on incomplete abortions now in incomplete abortions the process of abortion has already taken place but entire products of conception are not expelled and a part of it is left inside the uterine cavity the patient will give a history of uh, expelling something out of, out of the vagina uh, a fleshy mass and uh, with um, the uh, but the, the continuation of pain is still there they're having excruciating pain and the bleeding is still in progress uh, on examination yeah we need to try that Okay. We will give us a history of expulsion of a fleshy mass per vaginum, and the pain is still ongoing. They complain of uh, lower abdominal pain and uh, pain. जो है ना वो incomplete में variable होता है. It is not uh, excruciating. Generally, there may be pain, and sometimes there isn't any pain okay. because most of the products of conception have been expelled, and only part of it is there. and if part of there uh, it is there then it may not really cause any pain okay there is persistent pd bleeding and on examination the uterus is smaller because uh, uh, part of the fetus and uh, the uh, products of conception have been expelled so the uh, uterus is smaller than the period of amenorrhea and um, on pelvic examination the internal os is open yeah, it may be closed or इसमेंस You pass a dilator. The dilator may pass in easily, but, but the pelvic, yes. on pelvic it yes. might be closed. And the इसकी मतलब आपको इस तरह से मिसाज होगा कि sometimes अब आजकल ऐसा नहीं होता because the patient seek medical advice earlier. But previously, sometimes it happened that patients continue to have irregular bleeding for long periods of time, even for four to six months, and then they came in, and then the uh, you found that there was. What what is generally referred to as placental polyp, so okay. that was part of incomplete abortion, and uh, so therefore uh, it is only depending upon when did the patient expel the products of conception. If she passed out them and uh, say maybe an hour or two ago, and then the os would be soft and it may appear to be oh, partly open. Mm -hmm. So that that's a variable state. But depending upon the duration of pregnancy, depending upon the Uh, the extent of expulsion of uh, the broad circumception uh then the management the medical management is according to the fetal classification uh, the tablet mycoprostol can be given sublingual or per vaginum according to the fetal classification i have also um, added a table further in the presentation uh there will be uh, the my, my manual vacuum um, aspiration is preferred over dnc nowadays that is also another management if uh, the products of conception are not completely evacuated after the medical management and antibiotics are definitely given in this case because uh, there is manipulation in uh, manual aspiration complete abortion is when the products of conception are completely expelled from the uterus the patient uh, gives us a history that they have expelled something uh, per vaginum and uh, after that the pain has settled and um, the pv bleeding might be absent or there might be trace of pv bleeding there is a history of expulsion and pv bleeding is in traces or absent 
The internal examination shows that the uterus is smaller than the period of amenorrhea and the cervical loss is closed. The TDS a transvaginal ultrasound, it confirms that the uterus is empty and there are no more products of conception. So the completely, there is complete abortion. In missed abortion, the fetus is dead and retained passively inside the uterus for a variable period of time. In this case, um, it might occur due to, uh, um, it might be uh, um, a continuation of the threatened abortion. The patient might be on progesterone support and this mechanism can take place that the, there is progesterone dominance which reduces the myometrial sensitivity to oxytocin and uh, the product of conception is not expelled completely but the fetus dies and uh, maceration and mummification of the fetus takes place and the placenta becomes thin and the lichen is absorbed. So the uterus appears hey, hey, smaller. Hey, hey, the missed abortion ki aap baat karo na. Missed abortion ki jaise bhi aap the tasveer dikhai hai na. Dikhai hai tasveer. Ye choti hai. Isme to membranes aur wo lekar ki baat nahi hai na. Small one. Yes. So missed abortion. Most of these abortions they take place early in pregnancy, mm -hmm. and later are comparatively less often. So mm -hmm. earlier when the symptoms of pregnancy <coughs> they disappear. So first of all, the patient might notice that the vomiting, nausea vomiting that she had, she wasn't having any of those. And uh, she might give uh, a history of uh, bleeding or darkish, uh, of darkish color that, that may have, there may be spotting or bleeding or variable amount. And uh, so she feels kind non-pregnant if she felt any pregnancy symptoms. And when you do these days, what we do is that we do ultrasound. ultrasound yeah. When we do ultrasound, if previously there were uh, fetal cardiac activity had been seen on ultrasound, that will be absent. The size of the sac, pregnancy sac, will be smaller than what we expected. And uh, the size of the uh, embryo or the fetus would also be smaller. And you will find that there is no uh, cardiac activity. So those are the features. Therefore, now. We, we change the features from what uh, traditionally was written in the books to what it is now. And in many of the books, it still continues to uh, have those features which were there before uh, wider uh, use of uh, ultrasound. Now, usually presents with features of threatened miscarriage. They may, may have been uh, those, those symptoms, subsidence of pregnancy symptoms that they said, yeah. uterus becomes smaller in size, fetus and was maceration and mummification. These are the terms which are used for the fetuses which are comparatively larger. But if we are talking of uh, missed abortion at eight weeks, 10 weeks, then uh, to some extent the fetus becomes shrunk. So that, that can, uh, that's another, or it may become uh, uh, invisible. Yesterday we had a patient who uh, two weeks ago came with fetal cardiac activity positive, and then after two weeks uh, she gave history of just a bit of uh, bleeding. And we saw that uh, the fetal pole was hardly visible. So it is smaller than that. Oh, uh, the, uh, should I repeat this? You have already said everything. Okay, in case of septic abortion. This uh, is what I am going to do. This is what I am going to do. So then this is the fetal classification. Sir, Induced portion, uh, which for legal portions, legal after that. I is a viewpoint for us of you can UK legal grounds which for the amendment. चले ये फिर मैं बता दूंगा ये आप का हम शेयर कर लेंगे वो क्योंकि उसमें काफी सारी इंफॉर्मेशन है जो आपने बतानी है ये मेरी स्क्रीन नहीं आ रही ये भी मैंने शेयर कर दूंगा
माइक ऑन कर दे हम इलेक्ट्रिक हॉस्पिटल के ऊपर क्योंकि आवाज नहीं आ रही ले जी ठीक है वहां भी आ जाती है आ ही सकती है वो कैमरा भी है ना तो इस जी सर आ गई है आ गई आवाज वो आवाज आ रही है ठीक है रहने दे सो अह ये कुर्सी जरा एक तरफ थोड़ा सा स्क्रीन के सामने है we'll go along with the world health organization definition which is of uh, 20 weeks or between 500 grams or more just to remember <laughs> yeah before 20 weeks i mean yeah i used it i used i used 500 grams aapko madam ki tension lagi rehti hai all participants in this please uh, mute your uh, mics लेकिन जो उनका साथ होता है ना बच्चों वो क्या करे फिर बाकी तो थोड़ा साइड हो सकता है ना तो साइड होने के लिए माइक माइक अपना बंद करें अर्ली प्रेगनेंसी लॉस के कुछ आपको ये होने चाहिए मालूम होने चाहिए कि कितना इंसिडेंस है यू सी मेनी ऑफ द प्रेगनेंसी दे आर वॉश आउट अलॉन्ग विदेशन एंड पेशेंट और नो बडी बिकम्स अवेयर ऑफ दोस्त because there may have been a bit of implantation or early rise uh, sometimes uh, even before the the periods are overdue if you do beta sct and you might find that beta sct is raised which uh, might indicate pregnancy uh, it it is in, raised to that extent and but in, in a day or two the patient has a period so the, but that does not mean that any periods were overdue by a couple of days would mean that she has had a pregnancy until and unless there is uh, lab uh, evidence of uh, raised beta hcg you cannot say a delayed periods was because of necessarily pregnancy but the incidence of it has been estimated by various methods we will not go into that that uh, loss of conception is more than 50% more than 50% of the conceptions are lost and are not even known those which are known and then uh, there is miscarriage that the rate is up to 25 to 30% so almost one quarter of pregnancies they are lost so that's a high number if you look at it and now we also have 
Uh, one is uh, definition is of chemical pregnancy in which the pregnancy test is positive, but there is no ultrasound evidence of pregnancy. If the pregnancy sac is not seen on uh, the, the ultrasound, but if beta SED was raised, say 200, 197 or whatever, that would mean that the pregnancy was there, but it did not progress and that is called a chemical pregnancy. Clinical pregnancy is that in which the uh, pregnancy sac is identified on ultrasound and the rate of those pregnancies aborting is 25 to 30 percent. And majority of them, of course, they take place before six weeks, but uh, between six and nine weeks are also, that's a reasonably high rate of, of out of those 22 or 25 percent or 4 percent that after nine weeks, 3 percent and after 14 weeks is 2 percent. Chromosomal defects are identified in 50 to 70 percent. Now, uh, the patients many a times ask, what is the reason for that abortion? And actually, one is at a loss to say, what is the reason? And saying or telling them that it is because of the chromosomal defects is uh, uh, not really something which uh, answers their questions. They ask, what is the reason for chromosomal abnormalities? Now, these are the defects which happen so commonly that uh, miscarriages, because miscarriage is so common, 50 to uh, 25 to 30 percent of clinical pregnancy, and amongst them, 50 to 70 percent are because of chromosomal abnormalities. So this is something which happens in nature. That's the part, that, that's the kind of thing. It is not related with the, say anything the patient has eaten or uh, done, it is not related with that. That is the background incidence of miscarriages. In, uh, uh, but then age factor is also there. Those who are less than 40 years and then the pregnancy, the uh, miscarriage rate is lesser. And those who are 40 or older or who are above 40, the miscarriage rate is almost 50%. About 40, many books would say that above 40, the rate of miscarriage is 50%, and that is because of aging of the eggs. Because you know that new eggs are not formed, and the eggs are all those which were deposited in the fetal ovaries at 20 weeks of gestation. So those eggs, they, with the passage of years, they lose their capacity, number one, to get fertilized, and those which get fertilized, their capacity to uh, result in a viable pregnancy. <laughs> And then recurrent miscarriage, that's a topic in itself. We'll talk about that later on. And uh, the, But one to two percent of patients uh, overall will have recurrent miscarriages. It is uh, generally the, 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 the definition of that is uh, miscarriages. Uh, if there have been three consecutive miscarriages, that would be called as recurrent miscarriage. And uh, But even after three miscarriages, the chance of a pregnancy going to term will be more than, uh, say, uh, 65 to 70 percent. That's high percentage. And that is what, uh, while counseling the patients who have a recurrent miscarriage, one of the points must be mentioned that that's even without any kind of treatment. The rate of your pregnancy going on uh, to term and in a viable pregnancy will be 65 to 70 percent because this is rate of recurrent miscarriage after three miscarriages. That is 25 to 30 percent. Um, then ectopic pregnancy and molar pregnancy. These are various causes you can look up in the book why they are there and how they affect. Inko aap dekh lijega. Ye Aisha ne badi achhi tarah se bata di hai. Threatened, inevitable, incomplete, complete, or missed abortion. Iski baat inhone kar di hai. Mechanism in the miscarriages, that is, this is threatened abortion. Here you see that there has been a bleeding in between the choreo decidual space. This is chorion, and this is the, here it is the decidual roughly. Uterine surface is decidual, and uh, the margins of the uh, pregnancy sac, that will be chorion. And, and this is the chorion, and here, if there is bleeding, uh, that, that now uh, the limiting factor is that it has to stop on its own. There is no way that you can clamp it, you can stitch it, you can press it. It has to step. And the good thing is that it usually stops on its own. 
If it finds its way out towards the cervix, then it uh, comes out as a bleeding. Or in some cases, you might find incidentally when you do ultrasound in a patient in early pregnancy, you might find that there is a little bit of collection on the side, which is uh, retained uh, blood and the clot, which over a period of time absorbs on its own, gets resolved. But if it uh, is, uh, it progresses, continues to bleed, then it will dissect the chorion of the uh, deciduum and it will result in disruption of the pregnancy. On the other end, like this, in this and the pregnancy sac, that would become irregular and uh, the fetal cardiac activity would disappear. Yes. These are the features of uh, uh, threatened miscarriage that HCG is normal for gestational age. And you would see that there is an intrauterine gestation sac. Embryonic or fetal heart activity is there. If the sac is 20 millimeters, 20 millimeter sac, and you don't find the fetus in that, that means it's a missed abortion. A 20 millimeter sac uh, must have an embryo in it. And if an embryo is of six millimeters or larger, it must have cardiac activity. So if in an embryo of six millimeters or more or larger, there is no cardiac activity, that's missed portion. Uh, missed abortion would be low HCD for gestational age, intrauterine gestation sac, which is more than 20 millimeters in diameter, but no embryo. And an embryo of six millimeter with no cardiac activity. That would mean it is missed portion. Or a lastly, incomplete uh, persistence of rods of conception inside the uterine cavity. Now, uh, looking at the management, if you look at the threatened abortion, it is explanation and reassurance. Reassurance that in all probability, you are going to be all right, your pregnancy is intact and it will remain all right. And uh, these days we do add progesterone if she's already not taking. Diprogesterone is the uh, drug dufestone that we give. Uh, that is in the hope that it will quieten the uterus, it will uh, reduce its uh, uh, activity, uterine contractions if there are any. And also uh, because uh, you have to give some, uh, even for its placebo effect, you have to give some medication. So this is for. Uh, medical effects as well as uh, for the uh, satisfaction of the patient. As I said, avoidance of coitus is uh, that which is maybe preston ki taraf aare hai abhi ho ho baad mein aayi thi. Or then medical termination jo hai missed portion jo when it is diagnosed, then you explain to the patient it has happened etc. And all those three questions which generally are to be told to the patient why it happened. What are the chances of it's happening again? And how soon she can become pregnant again? Now, these are the questions which even without patients asking and without saying these questions, but you tell them, number one, that this is, these are the reasons and it is not no fault of the, the patient herself. And it is important in our social circumstances to say that when particularly mother-in-law is also there, she might say that you were doing this or you weren't doing that or you were eating or not eating that, so on and so forth. So therefore, it is important to tell that it is not anything that they did or didn't uh, that it uh, the, the, the abortion miscarried, uh, the, the pregnancy miscarried, and uh, therefore it is important and, uh, to say that the, what are the chances of it? As I said, that even if she has had three abortions, yes, miscarried and abortion can be. Uh, we talked about that. I'll come to that later. Abortion and miscarried, and. Uh, where was I? Uh, we explained that they, they, it's nothing to do with uh, what they eat. Or yes, they yes. Eat and of course, and that uh, even if she had had three miscarriages, the chance of her having a pregnancy taken to viability is 60, uh, uh, 65 to 70%. Now, after the diagnosis of missed abortion, the uh, we don't have mefiprestone available in Pakistan. So we bank on, but mefiprestone is an anti progesterone and uh, it uh, uh, that is its uh, 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 effect as it is said it is uh, uh, so it's an anti progesterone and uh, it, it 
uh, in cases where we have to induce abortion medically, mefiprestone uh, has a higher success rate combined with mesoprostol. Since we do not have mefiprestone available in Pakistan, we bank on mesoprostol and we've seen that it is uh, on its own, it is quite effective and in about 70% cases, it is uh, sufficient and we do not have to resort to an MVA. So medical termination is one and uh, this is the, an interventional MVA, which is manual vacuum aspiration. And as was said last time by Rubina, uh, that uh, D and C should uh, be avoided, should not be carried out and MVA because this is a procedure which can be carried out without anesthesia generally in most of the patients, one uh, just by a cervical block. And uh, the equipment is uh, sterilized chemically also. Uh, you should learn what are the chemical methods of sterilization of that because it is plastic made and it is not really autoclaved because if you would heat it to that extent, it will get deformed. So it is chemical presentation. You don't need an autoclave for that. Uh, the apparatus is available. There is a suction uh, syringe, special suction syringe and the cannulae, plastic cannulae that came and uh, come in various uh, sizes. And this is less traumatic uh, for the endometrium or the for removal of the decidua. Whereas at the, in DNC, you can uh, cure it excessively, and there is uh, the potential uh, for uh, uh, curating uh, uh, the uterine lining too much or the basal layer of the endometrium a little too much, leading to adhesion formation later on. Incomplete miscarriage. It, medical treatment or MVA. Now, this is, uh, uh, this morning I brought it out. This is Principles of Gynecology, Jeff Courts. I'm very fond of this. Uh, this is fourth edition, 1975. And in that time, management of threatened abortion was modern approach. Uh, before that, there is a section where uh, the Traditional approach is given, and a lot of drugs that are mentioned in that, rest, etc., bad rest. Since no treatment has a proved value, and since abnormality of the fetus so often plays a part in abortion, that's chromosomal or other, most gynecologists now take the view that it is unnecessary to confine the patient to bed, except when bleeding is breast. Of course, with, yeah, that would hold true even if someone is bleeding during heavy menstruation. Even at that time, you would advise rest. And that treatment should consist in nothing more than advice to lead a quiet life and to avoid coitus, which may introduce infection. This leave to nature approach impresses me as being rational, but it does not always impress the woman who is desperately anxious for a child and who has been led to believe in the efficacy of rest in bed. Right? So but you don't have to argue. In fact, it gives just as good results as any other method of treatment. So if I even today, uh, this was uh, 48 years ago, right? But even today, if I tell uh, a woman and many of the mothers would be 48 who would have a daughter or a daughter-in-law of 24 years old. And uh, when this book was written, they were bad. They were born at that time. <laughs> Those mothers-in-law or mothers, they still would say, maybe rest for nothing. So I wouldn't argue with them. I'd say, all right, but uh, she can be up and about and she can have a glass of water herself or she can prepare a cup of tea herself. And for her sake, for the daughter-in-law's sake, you can say that, yes. well, uh, <laughs> it's better to have rest. So there are mothers that come up and say, okay, please, can you tell them? Medically speaking, medically speaking, speaking, हाँ <laughs> 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 
Previously, there was this thing, illegal abortion or criminal abortion or septic abortion. Yeah, these are three things. Because illegal abortion is that which is performed by backstreet abortions. For example, someone comes to me that I want to have an abortion. What do we do? Someone comes to you. I'm asking all the participants. You don't have to answer by vocally, but ask yourself. Someone comes to you. Pakistan Abortion Act. Yes, I will tell, but please ask the question in English. <laughs> yes, uh, I'll tell you about that. But uh, we, we all must know about it. So uh, you should have, number one, you should know the legal uh, aspects of it. You should know the law in Pakistan, in your country, wherever you are practicing, number one. Number two, you should have your own philosophy, ethics and philosophy. If you provide that care, then uh, do you provide that care uh, uh, for monetary benefit? Are you going to charge them excessively or are you going to charge them the same as you charge an ordinary patient who may present with, say, incomplete abortion? Uh, and do you do that uh, by a procedure or do you do it medically? So and so forth. So what kind of uh, financial involvement is there? And I would advise that if you do it, don't do it for financial gain. The patient should be charged the same as she would be charged if it is uh, an incomplete abortion or a missed abortion in that fashion. So illegal or criminal criminal abortion in the sense because they were performed in back street without any uh, consideration to uh, uh, sterilization and uh, the, uh, most of those who were doing it were not properly trained. And uh, that resulted in uh, introduction of infection. And uh, I have seen uh, patients, uh, uh, there was one patient when I was uh, a senior registrar who had come with, and she belonged to a, a good social stratum. And she had an abortion and the dye who performed that had removed her uh, pelvic colon and descending colon. Mm -hmm. And uh, because of oh, thinking that, uh, that that is the baby's parts. And she had, uh, she survived. She had a colostomy and lived with colostomy later on. So, so, so uh, these days, this is known as unsafe abortion. So the category now is, uh, the emphasis is on unsafe abortion. And unsafe abortion is, if it is carried out by persons lacking the necessary skill, or in an environment lacking minimal medical standards, or both. That means there is no scale and no uh, medical standard for carrying out the procedure. That is unsafe abortion. WHO says that six out of 10 pregnancies are unintended pregnant. Six out of 10 unintended. All of, of all the unintended pregnancies, Six end in an induced abortion, more than 50% of them, they end in induced abortion, irrespective of the law of the country, whether it is uh, a restrictive law or it is, for example, in England, uh, they made a law in 1967 that you could uh, ask, demand and uh, uh, termination of pregnancy and it would be done. Nobody can go uh, And people could uh, get it like that. And at that time, in Europe, it was not available. And uh, one of the authors actually commented at that time that this is an invisible export, that patients from Europe, from France, etc., oh, okay. they came to England for having that, their abortion. And of course, they'll spend some money. And that's why that was the abortion tourism uh, kind of thing. And 45% of all abortions are unsafe. Remember that also. 45%. Six out of 10 unintended pregnancies. And it, these figures are important. Remember that 60% of unintended pregnancies end in induced abortion. And 45% of all those abortions are unsafe. And almost all of those unsafe abortions take place in developing countries. LMIC in Google. They are low and middle income countries. LMIC, low middle income countries. And if you look at the consequences of unsafe abortions, 
it is preventable, but it results in maternal death and morbidity because of uh, the, the processes which are involved. And it can lead to physical and mental health complications, social financial burdens on women, communities, and health systems. Because if 10% of maternal mortality in countries like Pakistan are because of unsafe abortion, that's a large number of uh, women dying of that. And all you need to do is that you provide the services. Number one, prevent the, uh, the unintended pregnancies and offer safe abortion. Yes, and uh, uh, availability of safe abortion care. In Pakistan, we have to be a little, you know, so this is, a, a, I, I told you last time that in 2019, National Institute of NIPS, I was talking about uh, uh, population studies, National Institute of Population Studies carried out this uh, national uh, maternal mortality survey in Pakistan. And according to that, the maternal causes felt into these average 41%, hypertensive disorders 29%, and pregnancy with abortive outcome 10%. So this is 10% of maternal deaths are because of abortion. This is the third most common cause of abortion in Pakistan. Uh, last year's state of world population of UNFPA uh, stated that there are 121 million unintended pregnancies. And out of these, if you look at those, 51%, almost 51% are uh, those which are carried out, which are unsafe. In Pakistan, this was a 2012 study, and all of you who are also preparing for examination, you should know something about, not only for uh, examination, uh, but, but, but it will help that you know the uh, stats and figures about Pakistan, that this is the half of these, say 2.1 million are unintended. Because only one third of women who are married, they are using contraception. And of these 2.1 million abortions, 34% they end in unplanned births, which is the reason for our population. rapid population, and 54% end in abortion. And all of them do not have complications, but the number of complications who were treated in that survey, according to that survey, was more than half a million. 623,000 women were treated for post-abortion care. And that is not only one survey. There are other uh, surveys also. This is uh, uh, 2.25 million abortions and uh, their distribution province-wise. And this is the number of women treated for induced abortion complications in 2012. Again, uh, province-wise. And uh, this, uh, this was another... Uh, institute, good model uh, institute. This is the uh, uh, international institute which had this uh, that in southern Asia the abortion rate was 35 in 1994 and in 2010 again it was more or less the same and percentage of all pregnancies ending in abortion or induced abortion 25 percent. This is the reasons for abortion legally permitted. Afghanistan may have a question mark dal dena chahiye ye Afghanistan mein Taliban ke aane se pehle ki baat hai ke it was allowed for, to save the life of a woman if the wife, uh, life of a woman is uh, endangered by continuation of that pregnancy for example she has severe cardiac disease in that kind of situation so but in Pakistan it is to save life of a woman and to preserve physical health now that's a broad kind yes. of uh, statement which gives for her mental well-being as well, physical and mental well-being. So she is so upset by having a pregnancy that she is psychologically upset and she, she is devastated and she cannot have, she has uh, crying spells. And, uh, so she is making a wreck of herself, etc. Et so because of that, uh, you can 
in Pakistan. India so to say. Do we need um, a certificate from the psychiatrist for this? No, no, not necessarily. Mm -hmm. You would say that okay. her physical well being, she's so unwell, she is. Uh, she has had a recent pregnancy and she hasn't recouped. She is anemic, she is so on and so forth. So you can do that. In India, to save the life of a woman, preserve physical or mental health, and also because of socioeconomic reasons. In Nepal, without restriction. So this is within this region, uh, what are the uh, ways with abortion? How does the law say for that? And this is, again, number one, in these countries, there are 66 countries, 25.5% of world population, which do not allow abortion at all. No abortion. 59 countries, which is 13.8% of world population, and Pakistan is amongst them, to preserve health. And socioeconomic grounds, 21%. And 61 countries, which is almost 40% of world population, in that it is allowed without any reason. Here, the green one, it is no. allowed. Red ones, it is not allowed. Dark brown, it is allowed uh, with Dark some reason. And light brown is uh, further, further uh, uh, liberal laws. Answer? So, India yes. to start light yellow, yellow, country lights. Yellow. 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 Kind of completely encompasses the Bangladesh, except for a little border here, which is uh, Myanmar or Burma. Well, hmm? Or ye, ye, uh, British General of Shadis Ghani may study he from uh, a review of evidence from 26 countries, uh, 2015 may, in Mitha, ke estimated treatment rate for 1,000 women of a reproductive age and more than 10 women were treated for abortion complications. Pakistan was in the same way. Myanmar was 1 to 3 women per thousand. Thi. Pakistan was 10 plus thousand. 10 plus women per thousand. So the rate is quite high. They were treated for complications. complications. So therefore, it becomes our responsibility as professionals in this fatality that we provide guidance. If a woman is I am a champion for safe abortion provision. I, I do uh, uh, propagate that. I give lectures about it. I tell people about this. But when someone comes to me asking for uh, abortion, I, I become a little, uh, you know, withdrawn. And uh, I do not readily give prescription for that. But it is important that someone who is desperate to have a mis uh, to terminate uh, to get her pregnancy terminated and if you cannot talk her out of it then you should provide uh, the proper medical method uh, or uh, prescription for that number one or if you feel that for some reason it is against your own beliefs or your own value system uh, then you refer her to a place where she can obtain uh, an abortion. For example, a family planning sister uh, center or Marie Stokes organization, if they have a center, they, they perform that. So you refer them to someone, but do not refer to a colleague saying that uh, he or she will perform an abortion because that will give that uh, kind of stigma to that uh, uh, doctor that uh, he or she is an abortionist. But remember that if we close our eyes, if we shut our ears, it is the problem is not going to go away. And it is going to be there. Unsafe abortions are amongst the leading cause of maternal mortality and morbidity worldwide. So far as morbidity is concerned, you see, we say that 10% maternal deaths are because of the unsafe abortion. We forget about morbidity. Morbidity is if, if she has infection, she will have PID and symptoms of PID, adherence, etc., chronic pelvic pain, lifelong. She all, all that uh, infection might result in secondary infertility. Asherman's syndrome. Uh, and Asherman syndrome and so on and so forth. So she is going to have miserable life, many of them, those who uh, encounter complications. So we have to take that also into account. 
we should not only be concerned with the mortality, which of course we should prevent, but also with morbidity. And almost every injury and death from unsafe abortion is preventable. Remember that because if we propagate about the effective use of contraception, if we provide safe abortion care, and if we do take Mahir's to provide timely post-abortion care. Legal status of abortion does not affect the number of women and girls seeking abortion. Irrespective of whatever law. And it has been seen that I hope many is me slide And prevalence of unsafe abortion is greatest in countries with restrictive laws. ये पाकिस्तान की स्लाइड्स हैं जो के डॉन पेपर में छपी थी ये आप जरा गौर फरमाएं इस पे प्रो लाइफ कॉन्ट्रसेप्शन हेल्थ प्रेगनेंसी व्हाई डस पाकिस्तान हैव लो कॉन्ट्रसेप्शन एंड हाई अबॉर्शन रेट्स दिस लेडी जोफीन टी इब्राहिम शी राइट्स एक्सेलेंट आर्टिकल्स एंड यू कैन फाइंड इट इन जून 18 2019 डॉन न्यूज़पेपर 22 million unsafe abortions, 47,000 deaths, 5 million injured. This is the extent. Here globally, 48% unintended pregnancies, 54 of unintended pregnancies. Uh, 30% post-abortion complications, 50 per thousand abortion rate in 2014. Or 6,000 plus abortions per day. ये फिर वही वो जो है उनकी 6000 एंड अब मजे की बात ये है देखो कि 91% ऑफ कपल्स दे नो ऑफ फीमेल स्टेरिलाइजेशन एंड कॉन्ट्रसेप्शन कंडोम्स के बारे में भी इंजेक्टेबल पिल्स के बारे में 90% अवेयरनेस है 86% अबाउट आईयूडीज 82% अबाउट कंडोम्स बट यूज नहीं कर वो हमारे ये और इसलिए not only we need to tell them about methods of contraception, but we also need to convince them that it is important for them to use that. So they have certain religious beliefs in the religious belief. No, religious religion. belief. We don't have any religious 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 belief. I'll quickly go through that. Yeah, <laughs> 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 If you highlight new hour, but the bottom is not coming. You see, I mean, I'm very important. Yeah, it's made your affected medical. Is Hmm? 
ये एक प्रेजेंटेशन थी आई गो थ्रू इट क्विकली दिस वाज अबॉर्शन इज अ हेल्थ केयर एंड ह्यूमन राइट्स इशू इसमें अगर आप देखोगे तो ये वही वाली ये लैंसेट में एक स्टडी थी 2017 की 55.7 मिलियन अबॉर्शन 2010-14 एवरी ईयर 54.9 55% वर सेफ एंड 45% वर अनसेफ and 21 million abortions 45 abortions were unsafe of these almost all of them they were and 97% yahi repetition unka hai or uh, when grouped by legal status of abortion the proportion of unsafe abortions was significantly higher in countries with highly restrictive abortion laws than those with less restrictive laws restricted legal access women look to alternatives outside of the formal health service prevalence of unsafe abortion increases when abortion restrictions increase percentage of unsafe abortions least restrictive laws 1% aur jahan pe most restrictive laws hain wahan pe 31% hai iska incidence royal college kya kehta hai unsafe abortions among the leading causes of maternity mortality and more or so use of effective contraception prevention of safe abortion and timely post care legal status of abortion does not affect the number of women and girls seeking one but the prevalence of unsafe abortion is greatest in countries with restrictive abortion laws pakistan ka restrictive nahi hai so 25 million unsafe abortions take place globally essentially and safe abortions are considered professionally as an essential part of sexual and reproductive health you must also be aware of sexual and reproductive health and abortion is considered to be a health care uh, component should be an integrated component of sexual and reproductive health care should be available as part of routine health services safely provide health care for such as midwives and nurses they can provide that and safe abortion care should be guaranteed as part of human rights based framework to help ये अमेरिकन कॉलेज की स्टेटमेंट है इसमें भी इफेक्ट इज अबॉर्शन इज एन एसेंशियल कंपोनेंट ऑफ वेमेन अबॉर्शन केयर इज इंक्लूडेड इन मेडिकल ट्रेनिंग क्लिनिकल प्रैक्टिस एंड कंटिन्यूइंग मेडिकल एजुकेशन सो दोनों का अमेरिकन कॉलेज रॉयल कॉलेज अबॉर्शन इज हेल्थ केयर अबॉर्शन अ ह्यूमन राइट यूनिवर्सल डेक्लेरेशन ऑफ ह्यूमन राइट्स व्हिच वाज एनंसिएटेड इन 1948 और इसमें सिंपली बिकॉज़ वी एग्जिस्ट एज ह्यूमन बीइंग्स इसलिए हमारे ह्यूमन राइट्स हैं और वो उसमें क्या है regardless of nationality sex nation national or ethnic origin color etc wo hamare upar lagu hai hamare hai hamare range from most fundamental the right to life those to make life worth living such as the right to food education work ye hai hamare fundamental rights aur ye reproductive health ki aapko definition aani chahiye ye important hai reproductive health is a state of complete physical mental and social well being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity in all matters relating to reproductive system and to its functions and processes aur iske liye ye hai ke ye ye hona chahiye reproductive health ye hai wsr women's sexual and reproductive rights reproductive rights health care services particularly abortion advocacy community participation legislative prompting those central to the process governing etc ye phir ek thi committee on elimination of discrimination against women ye cda reproductive rights ki baat unhone ki iske bare mein bhi aapko pata hona chahiye yahan pe ye jo 18 iske the international human rights treaties humne usme se hum wo hain jinhone पांच से आठ साइन किए हुए वो, वो उस कैटेगरी में हम आते हैं पाकिस्तान जो है उस कैटेगरी में जिसमें अठारह अठारह करने वाले बड़े कम मुल्क हैं इवन अमेरिका ने नहीं पूरे किए हैं वो भी उसी कैटेगरी में सो ह्यूमन राइट्स के लिए हमें वो भी करनी चाहिए वो स्ट्रगल भी हमारा हिस्सा बनती है so iska matlab ye hai ki raising of children in safe and healthy environment planned and healthy pregnancies ending or reversion of unwanted pregnancies and healthy expression of sexuality international abortion policy last 20 years more than 30 countries have amended their laws to express to expand access to safe and legal abortion 
40% women still living in countries where abortion remains highly restrictive. Here, Lancet ka those are the study. Nearly all countries with the most highly restrictive laws are low middle income countries. Tenth February, Uswagat ye Russia Tari Karata Ukraine Pesla main cover I think cover my ye then the cover my ye then Al Salvador may woman punished and restrict abortion laws freed after ten years. Ye tha has released another woman in prison for aggravated homicide. She had an abortion for only got the Hodkarway or peace tal ke liye usko jail mein mat kare for thirty years. Is as a laws and good woman. France So decriminalization of abortion is a human right imperative. Or Usme ye banta hai. Human rights require that abortion services be available to all, irrespective of their specific circumstances. So, abortion is healthcare, RCUG, or ACUG, American College, and abortion is a human rights imperative. Right? So, this is illegal criminal or unsafe, and septic abortion is not going ये होगी अनसेफ अबॉर्शन आ जाती है और अनसेफ अबॉर्शन की जब आप बात करते हैं तो उसमें यू हैव टू टॉक अबाउट ह्यूमन राइट्स और हेल्थ केयर और क्या वेदर इट इज अ हेल्थ केयर इशू और नॉट एंड एज प्रोफेशनल्स वी नीड टू हैव दिस काइंड ऑफ अवेकनिंग एंड रियलाइजेशन दैट सेफ अबॉर्शन इज समथिंग यूजुअली यू नो व्हाट हैपेंड प्रीवियसली व्हेन आई वाज ट्रेनिंग any woman who came with septic abortion, mm -hmm. she was in that state. She was critically ill. And still, we a uh, general attitude of medical profession used to be as if she is a criminal. So therefore, we need to, because that's a reality. You cannot bury your head in the sand. So, this will give rise to prostitution. We end. Right of prostitution nahi hai na Pakistan. Matlab ek rights dete hain abortions ke prostitution bhi badhegi. Aise. Kya kya prostitution kaise? Prostitution hi prostitution hi to prostitution to accordingly badhegi. Prostitution ka kahan se aa gaya chapter is? Wo prostitution kuch nahi hai. That's not. Nahi bachcha wo isme wo nahi hai. Wo ye alag se discuss karna. Uska iske saath taluk nahi. You mean isme promise quality badhegi? Abortion. It is not. abortion? figures Islam problem individually we have to apni apna clear karo. Professionally and mentally and philosophically. And therefore, what is the barame social now? Or self, yeah, 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 how you carry out your treatment, it all influences that. It affects that. And this is a big example. It's 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 a big example. When it's a big example, it's a workshop value clarification. If it's a big example, then what do you do? If it's a big example, then what do you do? Then what do you do? Then what do you do? We have to say that abortion is a safe abortion. वो हम उसको डिनाई करते हैं वो जब वो करके अनसेफ और सेप्टिक अबॉर्शन करा के आ गए फिर हम उसको ट्रीट करते हैं क्या है हम उसको कोई ऑप्शन दे देते हैं जाओ सो वी वी काइंड ऑफ कंडेम दैट सो ये वाली चीज है इसके लिए मैं आपको फिर ये स्लाइड्स में आपको दे दूंगा 
टाइम हमारा खत्म हो गया जी पाकिस्तान का लॉ बताना था वो किसने पूछा पाकिस्तान का लॉ मैंने बताया ना कि इट इज अलाउड फॉर फॉर फिजिकल एंड मेंटल हेल्थ उसके लिए ये अलाउड गुड मॉर्निंग सर अस्सलाम वालेकुम जी वीडियो ऑन कर दो सर ये हाल अस्सलाम वालेकुम मुश्किल हालात में पाकिस्तान के तो मुश्किल सब्जेक्ट ढूंढ के लाए हो मैं वही मैं इनको कह रहा था कि ये जब इसके बारे में बात करनी है तो आपने यही कहना कि जी मैं बगैर किसी दबाव के बगैर किसी प्रेशर के मुझ पे मुझ पे कोई दबाव नहीं है मुझ पे कोई दबाव नहीं है ये जितनी इंफॉर्मेशन पर साहब ने दी है इतना ढूंढ के रेफरेंसेस के साथ ये इम्पोर्टेंट है आप याद रखिए इसको बड़ी इम्पोर्टेंट है फॉर टू रीजंस एक सबसे आपके इम्पोर्टेंट बात तो है वी आर सिटीजन ऑफ पाकिस्तान एजुकेटेड सिटीजन ऑफ पाकिस्तान आपको रूल्स रेगुलेशन लॉस बाकी मुल्कों के यहाँ के पता होने चाहिए नॉलेजेबल होना चाहिए आप जो फरक साहब ने आज आपको किया है इस बारे में वी शुड हैव ऑल द इंफॉर्मेशन के क्या कानून है कहाँ पे है कहाँ पे नहीं है यहाँ क्या है वहाँ क्या है सब कुछ एज एनलाइट एंड एजुकेटेड पर्सन यू मस्ट बी अवेयर ऑफ इट तो वी थैंक फरक तो इतना सारी इंफॉर्मेशन वो लिटरेचर से डिग आउट करके लाए हैं आपको बताया लेकिन इनकी मौजूदगी में ही एक बात मैं कह दू जहां पे भी आप हो जिस मुल्क में आप हो जिस सोसाइटी में आप हो वहां के रूल्स रेगुलेशन को फॉलो कीजिए वहां के इन्होंने एक सौ अस्सी मुल्कों का तरह नक्शा आपके सामने रख दिया उसमें लैटिन अमेरिका वहां औरत को अंदर कर दिया और नॉर्थ अमेरिका वगैरह 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 सेलवाडो सब बातें इन्होंने बताई आप तो जो जहां पे है जिस मुल्क में है उस पर लाजम है वहां के कानून फॉलो करें अवेयरनेस आपको कंप्लीट होनी चाहिए रूल्स को फॉलो करना आप पे लाजम है अब उसके बाद बात यह है कि आप इमोशनली सोशली फाइनेंशियली कितना भी इंक्लाइंड हो टू हेल्प योर वीमेन आउट ऑफ दिस प्रडिकमेंट वो प्रडिकमेंट हो जाता है अनवॉन्टेड प्रेगनेंस वेदर टू कंटिन्यू और नॉट टू कंटिन्यू उस पर बहुत सारा अपने फैमिली का प्रेशर होता है अपने खावन का प्रेशर होता है ये क्या हो गया वगैरह 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 तो वो सारे प्रेशर में वो अनवांटेड प्रेगनेंसी मैरिड वीमेन आर मोर 99 परसेंट मैरिड वीमेन है जो अनवांटेड प्रेगनेंसी कैरी करती है हमारे मुल्क में कल्चर ही कुछ और तरह हो गया हम समझते हैं अनवांटेड प्रेगनेंसी सिर्फ अनमेरिड को होती है ऐसा नहीं होता मोस्ट ऑफ द प्रेगनेंसीज आर अनवॉन्टेड एंड दे आर मैरिड वीमेन और वो बेचारी फिर खामद का प्रेशर होता है और इकोनॉमिकली भी वो स्टैंड बिलो द लाइन तो ढूंढती है कहाँ जाऊँ कहाँ जाऊँ कहाँ जाऊँ आपके पास भी पहुंची पहुंचेगी मैंने पहला पिकरा बोला मस्ट फॉलो द रूल्स एंड रेगुलेशन ऑफ द कंट्री ऑफ द सोसाइटी आप ना कीजिए लेकिन फरक साहब ने जो बात कही इम्पोर्टेंट बात कही आप उसको डांटिए भी ना उसको डोंट गिव योर इम्प्रेशन के आप बड़े जन्नती हो वो बड़ी जहनमी है डोंट डू दैट मस्ट हैव एम्पथी मस्ट हैव एम्पथी आपके पास इंफॉर्मेशन होनी चाहिए जो कहाँ कहाँ ये होता है मैं उनको बुरा नहीं कहता जो करते हैं आई पर्सनली फील दे आर डूइंग ग्रेट सर्विस दे आर मीटिंग द नीड्स ऑफ द पॉपुलेशन जैसा इन्होंने कहा वरना वो बैक सीट पे जाती हैं तो 
और कॉम्प्लिकेटेड हो क्या आती है इवन लाइफ थ्रेटनिंग मोर्टेलिटी है अगर आप बड़े टीचिंग अस्पताल में काम करें तो वहां पे आती है वो इवेंचुअली डाई ऑफ इट सेप्टिक अबॉर्शन इंजरी टू इंटेस्टेन ये वो बहुत कुछ हो जाता है तो इसलिए आप उनको एक अच्छे सेंटर में रेफर करेंगी मैं जब इंग्लैंड में था कैथोलिक्स वर नॉट अलाउड टू प्रैक्टिस कॉन्ट्रोसेप्शन जब किसी पेशेंट की बीटीएल होनी होती थी बायोलैट्रिक ट्यूबलाइजेशन वो मेन सर्जन पीछे हो जाता था अपने असिस्टेंट को कहता है ये ट्यूब्स को जरा क्लिप करो ना वो उस तरह की प्रैक्टिस है बाकी सारा सिजेरियन सेक्शन बीटीएल असिस्टेंट ने कर दिया कंप्लीट इन्होंने कर दिया होता था मैंने देखा है लेकिन आपको फाइनल मैसेज यू वांट टू बी नोन एज ए गुड गायनेकोलॉजिस्ट नॉट गुड अबॉर्शनिस्ट क्योंकि अल्फाज तो बड़ी क्षति निकलते हैं सोसाइटी में जैसे मैंने कहा आपके पास लिस्ट हो कौन कौन करता है करते हैं मैं उनको बड़े बगलगीत करके मिलता हूं क्योंकि वो लेडीज है मुझे तो बगलगीर करने में मजा भी आता है मतलब और मैं उनका बड़ा थैंक यू भी करता हूँ बड़ी अप्रिशिएट भी करता हूँ तो तो समेट आप आई डोंट नो वेदर फॉर दट लाइक सेट आर नॉट लेकिन वो, वो उसकी प्रैक्टिस मेरे जैसी है ठीक है उसके लेक्चर के बाद मैं ये कह रहा हूँ उसको हो सकता है कि एक ही आ गया मैंने अंडरमाइन करने वाला अंडर कट करने वाला बिल्कुल ठीक कह रहे हैं तो लेकिन तो समिट आप ये इंफॉर्मेशन आपको एक चैप्टर में कहीं नहीं मिलेगी इसलिए इसको इनकी स्लाइड्स लेके दो चार दफा देख लीजिए यू मस्ट हैव दिस इंफॉर्मेशन नॉलेजेबल होना तो अच्छी बात नंबर दो दैट यू विल ऑल योर लाइफ एटलीस्ट ट्राई योर बेस्ट ट्राई योर बेस्ट टू फॉलो द रूल्स एंड लॉज ऑफ द लैंड नंबर तीन जिनको जरूरत है इस बात की उनको डिटेस्ट भी ना करो उनको डांटो भी ना उनको प्यार करो एंड सही राह दिखाना भी कार्य स्वभाव है कार्य स्वभाव है सो गाइड देम टू द राइट प्लेसेस अकॉर्डिंग टू देयर फाइनेंशियल स्टेटस अकॉर्डिंग टू देयर नीड्स ग्रेविटी के कितनी प्रेगनेंसी है कितना तो उनका जस्टेशन पीरियड है क्योंकि हर कोई मैं टेम्पल रोड पर रहा सारी उम्र वहां पे एक सफिया क्लिनिक होता था वो सफिया के साथ दूसरा सोफिया क्लिनिक साफिया क्लिनिक वो इतने सारे वो बॉशनिस्ट वहां पे एक स्ट्रीट ऑफ बॉशनिस हो जब मैं किसी को बताता कि मैं गायनिकॉलोजिज्म टेम्पल पे रहता तो मेरे तरफ शक्ल वो गौर से वो देखते मुझे <laughs> तो ये कीजिए पर मेरे इस कमेंट के बाद तुम दो फिक्रे और बोलो फिर क्या <laughs> आपको कहा है मैंने you have the final word oh uh, nay uh, uh, the important thing uh, is that uh, while uh, uh, everyone has to have their own uh, philosophy and uh, uh, approach towards issues like this uh, the topmost thing is that you must uh, play the game according to the rules uh, and the laws of the land uh, that is something which you should not break and uh, you should must work within that number one and uh, as uh, doctor said you have to have that sympathetic or uh, empathetic attitude and uh, if you do not find yourself uh, capable or uh, inclined to carry out the procedure or advise uh, medical treatment for that then you refer the patient to uh, to a, a, a suitable facility this this is important 
ठीक है जी थैंक यू वेरी मच सर थैंक यू मुलाकात से